Willkommen, bienvenue, and welcome back to Blast Off with Light. And today, we're going to look at something that I have never, ever seen before in modded Minecraft. Never! I've played a lot of modded. Quite a bit. Never seen this happen. I didn't even know this was possible. Got enough hype? Are you hyped? Now, it's not a good thing. It's just something I've never seen before. So, let's come in here. Uh, it's a blade, isn't it? No. Oh, yes. There it is. Turbine blade. Gold, redstone. Pressure it to one. Good to go. Pressure. Oh, lower than I thought. Let's give that a little bit more pressure. So what we do, we give it a gold, we give it a redstone. And we watch. Drops in the gold. Give it a second. Drops in the redstone. We've got a gold. We've got a redstone. We've got the power. It doesn't know it's supposed to be doing anything. Hello? Hello? Well, it turns out it needs a second piece of redstone. And boom! It's done. Turbine blade. One redstone, one gold. So says any eye. The great all-knowing any eye. Any recipe you could ever want, it's in any eye. Except it's wrong. I have never, ever, seen any eye be wrong about something. I don't know how they managed it. Because if you check the in game wiki, hello, in game wiki, it knows the correct recipe with two redstone and a gold. Now, why does the wiki know, but NEI doesn't? I thought NEI actually looked up the recipes in the game itself. Like, I thought it was auto-loaded. Granted, I don't know anything about how it works. I've never configured a mod pack. I thought you dumped it in and it was good to go. But apparently that's not the case. So that's our super amazing thing for this episode. <laughs> All the rest of it will pale in comparison. So I probably should have saved that for the end and hyped it up even more, but it's probably all the hype your poor little hearts could stand. So let's get back to what we were supposed to be doing. What I promised last episode while I was on that mountain. New Metacraft. Assembly line. So first, we're going to make the things. So we're going to need all this plastic and compressed iron and stuff. And I've got my assembly halo, so I don't have to go anywhere. Drop that in. Drop that these in and then pile plastic on top we got our various cylinders and we grab these okay so piece bees and hoppers compressed iron and the cylinders to get ourselves two IO units which will be good uh, we'll have to check on how to change the state of those, but for now, we should be able to set up our system. So we need a place for input and output. I'm just going to make it one double chest. We need our assembly IO units adjacent to said thing. Can we just right click you? Shift right click? Hmm. I might need to make a pneumatic wrench. Let's see. Uh, somewhere in here, assembly machines, assembly I.O. unit, uh, right click on the I.O. unit with a pneumatic wrench. Lovely. Oh, we're going to be getting one from the quest. Uh, then we've got a laser. The assembly platform has to be relatively adjacent to all of the devices. And then you just need the assembly controller adjacent to 
the blah, like one of the bases. So we'll put it right there. Now it needs uh, pressure. Now we could build from here over to it, but we'll lose pressure while that's happening. So instead we'll build from here in. Now that was unexpected. Huh. I was not expecting this to attach to the bottom of that. But it did. And I am pleased. Okay, so we'll put a little more charcoal in there. Now if you check it, it says it's on standby. It's not really ready to do anything. You can upgrade it like everything else, but it also needs a program. So we found one of those in the uh, one of the bunkers, but I think we might be getting one from the quest anyway. So let's start, show our quests, pressurization, open that up. Now we can automate our etching. Uh, it'll give us this laser program and either a pneumatic wrench or a pneumatic helmet. Now, before we choose the wrench, we should probably make sure it's worth it. Because if we could just make the wrench right now, we might just make it right now. That is pretty easy. Might have to check on the burst plants. Versus the pneumatic helmet, which is at least slightly more expensive. Let's check on the burst plants. So we might be able to just make the pneumatic wrench right now. Yeah, because flying flower, chopper, lightning, do we not even have burst seeds? Rain, flying, slime, potion, fire, helium, lightning, chopper, propulsion. We might not have any burst plant seeds. That seems insane to me, with how much bone mealing we've done, and how many dungeon chests we've opened, it seems downright insane that we have no burst plant seeds. Wow. Granted, I, I'm not a huge fan of the pneumatic helmet at this point. It has a couple of useful things it can do, but it's not my favorite. So, for now, I'm going to take the pneumatic wrench. We can make the pneumatic helmet later if we decide we really want it. And it will give us the laser program, which we already had, but that's okay. Yeah, one of the IO units needs to be pneumatic wrenched. Let's take that. And unfortunately, we have to do the advancement in tech before it'll open up the, uh, the drones. Um, which is... Unfortunate, because that's four of the really expensive PCBs. So it goes. Now, we've got a pneumatic wrench, and it's got pressure in it, which is amazing. Okay, so that's all we need to do with it. For it right now, at least. So we come in here, we give it the laser program, and there are a couple of things that can be made using the laser program. Um... We'll need an assembly drill for something, but not what we're doing today. Uh, and it doesn't necessarily know what to do until you give it something to work on. So let's go grab our uh, leftover PCBs that we haven't done anything with. Which we would normally put in the light box and then dump in some etching acid. But instead, we're just going to put it into this chest. Now, it appears it wants to get up to uh, three and a half bars of pressure, so let's give it a little more to cook. We'll grab a little more charcoal and then take a little nap, come back and see what we can do. Now, I haven't had any uh, additional time to work on the aesthetics, so the... Uh, the spruce area is still how it was. I have not started any of the other districts. I might start that tonight. 
Uh, let's grab one of these. Yeah, not eaten recently is always a good sign. Okay, and now it's running. Let's get to a position where it isn't in the dark. So this guy grabbed one of the PCBs from the chest. The laser is now going to do its lasery job. Come on. Bzz. There it goes. Circles once around it. It is now etched. You can even see the little tiny bit of detail on it. And then the other IO unit should come over, pick it up, and throw it in the chest. Now this can be upgraded with the speed upgrades. So this entire process can just go zoop, 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 bonk. Supposing you can supply the uh, PCBs fast enough. And there it goes. And you can just let it do its thing. Uh, but you do need to manage the pressure because this does use some of the air to do every single one of them. So you need to get this set up such that you can give it the power, but it won't explode. Thanks to the security upgrade, it's not going to explode, but it could waste your materials. So yeah, we got the thing, reaches into the chest. We'll grab the second one and puts it in. And when the other one puts it back, it puts it into the other chest. So it's down here, and we know it's done. Granted, that's still just an unassembled PCB. We still need the transistors and capacitors, which means I need a better source of redstone. I'm mostly out. The conjuration station has about a stack, but I haven't been over there enough for it to have generated everything we need. But we've got a few more things to do, and this may well open up the path to getting my better mana farm. That will be awesome. Speaking of which, we should check on the mana situation. Bad, but not dire. We can uh, come over here, grab ourselves a pile of charcoal, because we make more than we use, which is pretty awesome. Um, and, oddly enough, we don't actually have to go down underneath. We should be able to just toss it on the ground here, and the hopper hawk should be able to grab it. And there it goes. Magic! <laughs> okay, so we've got ourselves our PCB etching system. Next up, we want something a bit, uh, fancy. So let's grab one, two, three of these. One, two, three, four. I think only three of those. And one of these. Oh, we already have it. Pretty sure this is the recipe. Slabs, red plastic, and a tube. Charging station. So we can put this anywhere along this path. Um, I'm going to put it relatively out of the way. And in here, we can take our pneumatic wrench and charge it back up. However, right now, this is a bad place for this. Because it's only got the regular tubes going to it, so it only can get up to 5 bars of pressure, but the wrench goes up to 10. So we'll eventually make a better compressor and attach it through better tubes to this guy. The other thing that it needs is this. This, I know, has tripped me up a lot of the times I've worked with pneumatic craft, and I get to the drones, I'm like, how do you charge these drones? Because the charging station, well, you can charge them manually, but with the dispenser upgrade, it makes a little platform on it, and then the drone can land on it and recharge itself. Which again, because we've only got five bars of pressure, is not great. But we'll be able to upgrade that in the relatively near future, because this assembly controller will let us make uh, the better pipes. And I'm not sure what goes into the better uh, compressor. Let's check. Uh, 
compressor. Okay, so a better compressor. Regular compressor and a better pipe. That, yeah, super easy. No problems there. Uh, but in the meantime, we're going to need these and this and those and that. Do I need anything else? Let's grab these just in case. Okay. So we need, I know, five of these and one of those. Yep, I have completely forgotten the recipe. Oh, but what we really need, let's pick all that back up, is to make all of these blades into actual turbine thingies. Yes, that's the technical term. <laughs> there we go. Pile of turbine thingies. Which when you combine with a PCB, four of these, you get a drone. And then with two of these, one of those, five and one, so close. So very close. I don't remember the formula for this one. Aha! Trial and error. You just need to remember what it looks like and what it involves. So now we've got ourselves a programmer. I don't know where I want this. So I'm going to put it right here. Now this, I don't think takes any pressure. You just need to eventually give it these puzzle pieces to tell it what you want your drone to do. Now there are a lot of them now. But the color is what you really need to pay attention to. Because that'll tell you what sort of plant you need to make it. And most of the tiny little pictures should give you a good sense of what's going on. So like, attack things! Uh, the filter's a little tougher to tell. The area is supremely important. Um, so it'll tell you, tell the drone where to do its job. So with dig area, you need to identify the area. You can both whitelist and blacklist. Um, so you can place things, you can right click blocks, right click entities. So like milking cows. Um, you can pick up items, you can drop items. So if there's an area, you can grab things and move it along. Uh, export to inventory, import from inventory, so you can pick up the bucket for milking the cow. Uh, importing and exporting liquids, which could come in handy. Uh, importing and exporting entities, which is particularly fun. Uh, now, teleport uh, to location is interesting. That one I didn't realize was there. Uh, emitting redstone, that's right, sending your drone somewhere and telling it to just be electric. Um, so these I haven't, these white ones I haven't seen. So we've got time and looping controls, which didn't exist the last time I checked. Uh, suicide? Oh no! <laughs> but that could be interesting because then it'll drop itself. Um, so it'll do what it does, drop itself, potentially into a hopper or into an applied energistics thing or onto a pressure plate, goodness knows. And then we've got conditions. So if blah -dee blah blah blah, then blah -dee blah blah blah. Which I imagine you can uh, connect to uh, the loop control things, potentially. But the direction of the things makes me kind of doubt it. Uh, but I'll have to check on that. So you've got lots of if and thens. Import and export RF. Wow. That's fancy. So there's a lot you can do with these drones now. It might take a little bit to get used to the puzzle piece system. It might take quite a bit of resources because each puzzle piece takes... Uh, I'm not sure how many you get for each PCB, but uh, 
So you got the puzzle pieces, you get four for each PCB. So each different color. Uh, so we need repulsion seeds just to be able to start the program. Uh, creeper seeds for the locations. Yeah, we're going to need to make sure we've got all the seeds we need. Uh, so if I want to do the filters, I'm going to need some burst plants. So I'm going to have to get on that. But that's all for this episode. Let's take a nice look at this before the sun goes down. So that's all for this episode. I will see you in the next episode of Blast Off with Light.